Russia's Federal Security Service, or FSB, is a notoriously secretive agency. But even for a Russian space service official, the FSB's first deputy head, Sergei Korolev, stands out as exceptionally secretive. Korolev was one of Putin's key allies in the war against Ukraine and the attacks against the West. He runs a special service that spies, hacks, and sabotages Western countries. But this didn't prevent him from sending his children to study in Europe. He was sanctioned by many countries because of the FSB's involvement in Russia's war against Ukraine. But the sanction lists are riddled with mistakes in his personal data, which might help him evade them. He has been successfully hiding his appearance for years, so journalists are wrong when using this photo to illustrate him. But we are correcting these mistakes and revealing what Kalilov actually looks like. You are watching an investigation by the Kyiv Independent. I'm Alisa Yurchenko, a Ukrainian investigative journalist who recently joined the Kyiv Independent team. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss the next videos. Before we go back to the secrecy surrounding Karlov, it's important to understand what he and the agency he is running are responsible for. The FSB is one of several Russian security and intelligence agencies, but a very significant one. It is the successor to the Soviet KGB, where Putin used to serve. He now uses the FSB for a wide range of provocations and attacks around the world. Cyber operations, bot farms, misinformation campaigns, spies, sabotage, but nothing compares to the FSB's most notorious operations. Was it your team that poisoned Navalny, please? This summer, Ukraine's security service, the SBU, exposed a network of FSB agents preparing to assassinate the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. Контррозвідка та слідчі СБУ зірвали плани ФСБ із ліквідації президента України та інших представників вищого військово-політичного керівництва держави. The FSB is headed by this man, Alexander Bortnikov. Our investigation is focused on his first deputy, Sergei Krylov. You have hardly heard his name because he stays out of the public eyes as much as possible. But his position implies that he is involved in the management of the operations that we have mentioned. Moreover, it was the FSB, according to previous media reports, that provided Putin with intelligence in preparation for the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. This is why many countries have imposed sanctions on Korolev. It seems that very few people know what the second-in-command at the FSB actually looks like. Korolev has never been interviewed and has no known social media accounts. One will not find Krylov's photo on the FSB website either, but journalists often use this single photo as one portraying Krylov. It has been published hundreds of times to accompany mentions of Krylov online. Unlike in the news, this photo has never been used by investigative journalists. Many of them have doubted that it was actually Krylov on it. Насчет физиономии, я просто сейчас не уверена, его ли это фотография. And they were right. The real Krylov looks nothing like the man in the photo. Image analysis software helped us identify this guy who had accidentally lent his appearance to a top FSB official. This is a Russian man from Yekaterinburg named Artem Kuplenikov. He has no connection with Krylov, but with a photographer whose authorship is indicated in some publications of the photo. In 2016, a local news agency, Paveska Dnia, in Yekaterinburg, where the photographer worked, used this photo to illustrate the news about Krylov's promotion within the FSB. The report didn't indicate that it was Krylov on the photo, and soon after, they even removed the photo from the news story. But the illustration remained on the photographer's personal Facebook page. This mistake seems to have kicked off a years-long misidentification of Karlov as other media picked up this photo as his portrait. But the most ridiculous thing is that if you call the photographer, he will tell you straight out that it's not Karlov from the FSB. How do we know? We called him. I just want to... If you remember this person, to tell you if you can illustrate Karlov or not. So if it's not the FSB director of Karlov, then... Mm -hmm. 
Это я вам как бы гарантирую сто процентов. The bizarreness does not end here. Eventually, in 2021, the false photo of Kralov was used as his official portrait on the website of Rosatom, a Russian state-owned nuclear company, where he is a member of the supervisory board. Yes, we saw the photo on Rosatom's website even while preparing this investigation. We also found out where this photo was taken. Artem Kuplenikov, the man in the photo, told us about it himself. I called him pretending to be the communications director of Rosatom, as I wasn't sure he would answer a Ukrainian journalist's questions. Kuplenikov admitted that it was him in the photo. Back when it was taken, he worked at the internal security service of Yeltsin Center, a cultural complex in Yekaterinburg. There were many public events at the Yeltsin Center, and photo and video shooting was allowed. So a photographer, who he doesn't even remember, took the photo during one of such events. Просто эта фотография у нас находится на сайте Росатома, и она относится к заместителю директора ФСБ. А как была сделана эта фотография? Фотография была сделана, когда я работал в Бельцин центре. И как она попала вообще? Я тоже этой темой как бы интересовался. Ее там и видеоролики где только не размещают. Как бы писали тому, кто выкладывал ее, как бы говорили, что удалят, но до сих пор, вот, видимо, она где-то гуляет. А вы писали э, фотографу, верно? Яркову? Не фотографу, а в Ютубе где-то она попадалась, и просто вот кто ролик выставлял, как бы с ним связывались. Ну, просто как бы там написали, что да, хорошо удали. Потому что я к это, причастию этой фотографии к размещению вообще никакого не имею, я там бы... Хотел, чтобы она нигде там не фигурировала, потому что я не давал согласия как-то на это, и я не являюсь тем человеком, за которого меня там. This is how the misrepresentation of Kralov's appearance started. Was it a deliberate special operation? It's hard to say about Rosatom, but as for the journalists who shared the photo, it looks more like a mistake reinforced by Kralov's lack of publicity. So, since that is not a photo of Kralov, the next question is what does he actually look like? Representatives of Ukrainian intelligence have provided several Ukrainian and foreign journalists with photographs that they believe show the real Kralov. We have investigated these images independently, and we are able to confirm that the man in the photos is most likely Kralov. There are four reasons to prove this. First, this person shows up in photographs taken during events involving the FSB director Alexander Bortnikov. In fact, these are meetings of the Russian Anti-Terrorist Committee, an interagency assembly headed by the FSB director. Most of the photos don't have any captions, and Krylov is never mentioned in the reports about the committee meetings. But two photos provide a clue. There is a name sign reading Sergei Borisovich Krylov in the frame. So, this man is Sergei Borisovich Korolev, and he attended meetings with the FSB director. The second source to confirm Korolev's appearance was an account on the Russian social media platform Adnoklassniki. It's Russian for classmates. It appears that the account is run by a former classmate of Sergei Korolev from the FSB Border Institute, formerly a KGB school. The account has been active for at least five years and contains more than a thousand photographs mostly of Russian security forces involved in the border service at various times. Kralov, the same man seen in the photos with the FSB director, can be spotted in many of them. Several photos show a gathering of the FSB Border Guard Institute alumni, apparently on the occasion of the 20-year anniversary of their graduation in 2003. This one is in the album called Classmates who are now generals. In the comments, the account owner describes the career path of the man in the photos. Karelov, he wrote, started in the bodyguard service and rose to head the FSB Economic Security Department. The account also has photos of Jan Karelov as a cadet in the KDB Body School. They are published in the album entitled Studies at the Bodyguard School 1979 to 1983. The year matches Karelov's official date of joining Russia's security services mentioned on the FSB website. It makes sense, because as a cadet, he would count as a member of the force starting his first year of studies. Here you can see the name and the initials of Sergei Karelov made during the production of this album photo. Well, this account is a godsend for our story, but we have more.
The third reason to believe this exactly the Sergei Karelov we need is this report. You see this man photographed alongside former Russian defense minister Anatoly Serdyukov. During Serdyukov's tenure as minister, Sergei Karelov served as his advisor. Eventually, we also found this report in this video filmed in 2020, which is our fourth proof. This was the recording of a popular Russian TV comedy show, Kevin. The man who appears at events alongside the FSB director identified both there and in old photos on Adnoklasniki as Sergei Borisovich Karelov was sitting at the comedy show surrounded by several other people. We identified them. This is the family of the FSB's first deputy director, Sergei Karelov. Sitting next to him are his wife Marina, son Boris and daughter Anastasia. We match them with other images we found on the web. So now you know what the first deputy director of the notorious Russian secret service really looks like. This is the correct image and this is a fake. But the mysteries surrounding the top of the official do not end here. We also noticed a strange confusion with his date of birth on international sanctions lists. Hello is subject to sanctions imposed by the EU, Switzerland, the UK, Canada, the US, New Zealand, Australia and Ukraine as a result of Russia's war against Ukraine. These sanctions restrict his access to assets in these countries, limit financial operations and in some of them impose a travel ban. But for some reason you can see different dates of Karlov's birth in the sanctions list of different countries. There are many as three of them. This looks strange. It is all the more surprising as up until these sanctions were imposed in 2022, there seemed to be no confusion about Karlov's date of birth. It was listed as July 25, 1962. This date of birth was on Wikipedia pages about Karlov both in English and Russian. This was the only date of birth mentioned by Russian investigative journalists reporting on Krylov and his alleged links to Russian criminals in a story published in 2021. Thus, at the time of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Krylov's date of birth was not a secret and was not questioned. But then something went wrong. In 2022, the EU and Swiss sanctions list mentioned two possible birth dates of Sergei Krylov both a decade earlier than the known one, in July and November 1952. We couldn't find any obvious explanation for why these birth dates were listed. Equally interesting is why Karlov's publicly known date of birth wasn't included in the EU and Swiss sanctions list even as one of the options. We are convinced that Karlov was born on July 25, 1962. This date is listed in the leaked Russian registration and flight records. It is also mentioned in the Adnoklasniki account, presumably run by Karelov's former classmate. Second row, second from the left, Karelov Sergei Borisovich. On July 25, 2022, Sergei celebrated his 60th birthday, the account owner wrote, commenting on one of the photos. Several countries have also identified Karelov's date of birth as July 25, 1962, in their sanctions list. So, the wrong date is listed only in the EU and Swiss sanctions. We sent inquiries to the sanctions authorities of the EU and Switzerland. The EU spokesperson for foreign affairs and security policy assured us that regarding Krylov, they had no information about difficulties in implementing the sanctions. But he didn't explain how a birth date of 1952 got into the documents. The Swiss sanctions authority reported that their list of sanctions against Russia is identical to the EU one and that deviations are being examined. The errors in sanctions list could complicate identifying Karlov as a sanctioned FSB official for border authorities, banks, and other institutions. This means that the FSB's first deputy director may have been able to circumvent restrictions in some European countries. Whether Karlov holds any accounts, real estate, or other assets in Europe remains unclear. What is clear is that he and his family lead a wealthy lifestyle often connected to European countries. They appear to have a range of luxury cars and real estate in Russia. The property is located near St. Petersburg and in the city, in Moscow and near it. In a manner typical for officials, most of it is registered in family and associates' names. But even more important in the context of sanctions is the fact that Karlov's children started in Europe. Yeah, the senior FSB official seems to be a believer in Western education. For years, he sent his children to take courses in private schools in the UK and Switzerland, according to photos on the website of these schools. It's time to summarize. 
They have figured out who lent his appearance to a top FSB official and how it happened. Now you also know what Kurilov and his family really look like. In addition, we noticed confusion in his personal data in the sanctions list and suggested the most correct data. But the question remains, why did European sanctions list include incorrect birth dates for a high-ranking FSB official? On the one hand, it might be a simple human mistake. However, Karlov's actual birth date has been widely available. Given the abundance of public records mentioning Karlov's correct birth date, it's surprising that only incorrect versions appeared in the EU and Swiss sanctions lists. With that, I would like to ask you to like and share this video on social media if you find it useful. In doing so, you'll contribute to exposing a Russian official involved in the war against Ukraine. And if you'd like to learn more details about this story, make sure to check this investigation on our website, giveindependent.com. Thank you for watching this video. Please tune in to our channel tomorrow for a premiere of our new investigative documentary, Shadows Across the River. Subscribe to our channel not to miss it.